watching the draft 24 years later, what what do you remember about our draft process in 98? What going into it and what it, what you expected? Yeah, it certainly is a lot different now. It seems like um, uh, um, obviously the actual draft day itself is completely different, right? We were in New York. Um, I think there were four of us, if I recall. Yeah. I think it was me, you, Charles, and I want to say Curtis Enos was yep. was there as well, who got taken by the Bears. Uh, Andre Wadsworth uh, wasn't there, and um, uh, Randy Moss, who I think went 17, wasn't there. But, uh, you know, it, I, mean, I just remember it being an exciting time. You know, obviously kind of curious uh, about getting your, you know, your first – major job started you know and so i was kind of anxious if i recall just kind of uh you know looking forward to you know kind of making it official and getting to that team and getting the playbook and getting going but uh it was fun being with you and, you know, and charles obviously we've been together just a few weeks before or, or a few months before at the heisman banquet with uh with with, uh, with randy and uh um it was just cool you know, you, you know to kind of see everybody in that room knowing that they were all going to be playing in the NFL uh, um, um, any minute now. You know, um, I, I want to describe to everyone who's listening, you know, kind of the atmosphere around Canton last August. Um, you know, I had the honor to be there and celebrate your induction, which which what struck me was the, the amount of former teammates of yours that were there to honor you. That had to feel unbelievably special uh, in, in a very impactful and important night that they were there. That, that's the one thing that really stood out to me, and that, that says a lot about you as a teammate. What did you feel well, in that moment? Well, I appreciate that. Like I said, I appreciate you being there as well. And to me, teammates are you know, kind of what it's all about. And it doesn't matter uh, uh, what level you played at. You know, um, I had high school teammates there. I had college teammates. And, you know, I had teammates from, from Indianapolis and Denver. And, uh, you know, once a teammate, always a teammate, regardless of which team, uh, you played with that teammate on, and uh, it, it's just a special bond, you know, knowing how hard you've worked to try to accomplish a goal, and, uh, you know, maybe you've struggled together, maybe you've reached the pinnacle together, but uh, it's definitely a special bond, and, and so that probably was one of the coolest things for me as well, to have all those teammates and different people that have been a part of your football journey all kind of there in one room. Everybody's all over the country now, you know, living life and doing different things, but to have them all right there in one room was certainly a special moment. Yeah, it was fun to be there. It was neat to be a part of it. Uh, you and I were going to be linked uh, on my end forever, regardless uh, of the success that we had. And sure enough, uh, you continue to impress. And you may be one of the most um, um, individuals that I, I would resent because of your success, but I can continue to watch you just be the epitome of 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 what you want to be and uh it, it's been an honor uh you know you and i met on a phone call in 1997 because our sids <laughs> thought it would be a good idea because we were going to be linked and sure enough and the rise that you had the fall that i did but no matter what um you didn't look at me any different and uh that is incredibly meaningful to me and my family and that's why i still consider you a, a friend and i've loved to see your success over the time you and ashley and the family and and everybody. So I appreciate you taking the time today, Peyton. Well, well, Ryan, I appreciate the friendship and uh, have great respect for you and your uh, perseverance and uh, keeping the faith. And uh, it's been uh, it's been special to have you as a friend. And like I said, it's hard to believe we had that phone call back there in the fall of uh, of uh, '97. And I, I want to say uh, I can't remember. I think it was the ESPYS, the Heisman, the draft, uh, the rookie photo shoot so uh, uh um a preseason game we played there in, in 1998 that was not very good football probably <laughs> on, on either team uh, i was trying to avoid throwing interceptions in the preseason because i knew i was about to throw a lot in the regular season but anyway i appreciate you having me on pal and uh certainly wish you all the best all right let's get some golf this off season we'll talk to you soon sounds good bud take care all right peyton manning everybody pro football hall of famer uh, two-time Super Bowl champ, five-time MVP, and number one overall pick in the 1998 NFL Draft. Uh, and a good man, guy that's been uh, incredibly, um, an incredible human being to me, right? Him and his family. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but he reached out and wrote to me while I was in prison. Uh, you have a similar story, Chris Brockman, when you were a kid in high school. You wrote to him. Oh, man, I loved Peyton Manning. Oh. 
when I was growing up, I played quarterback in high school. I was extremely mediocre. And uh, I wrote Peyton one year uh, when I was maybe going to be the starter and asked him for some advice, what his favorite plays were, whatever. Obviously never expecting to hear back. And uh, I didn't exactly hear back in the way that I wanted, but uh, one day over the summertime, a big envelope from the University of Tennessee showed up at my house, and it was an autographed 8x10 from Peyton Manning. Uh, personalized to Chris, uh, Peyton Manning. It's still framed up in my mother's house uh, to this day. It, was, it meant a lot to me then. It means a lot to me now. Uh, obviously a great player, great person. The, the stories uh, are plentiful like that. And the ironic thing was, is that the letter I got, I remember my roommate, he brought it up to me, and it's what I was doing at the time because I was in such a dark place. No matter what mail or correspondence came in, I didn't care who it was from. Coach Gilbride reached out to me, former teammates, and this is from Peyton Manning. And I just tore it up. Never read it. Still haven't asked him what he said in it. I don't know. It's just, uh, wow. it's where I was at. But, but getting something like that, even though I reacted negatively to the moment of it, it, it bolstered me, right? It gave me hope. Hope that I didn't know existed that ultimately got me to the place where I'm hosting the Rich Eisen show and talking to my, my friend who had a Hall of Fame career, right? I mean, that's, that's what building each other up as human beings is about. And so that was a lot of fun. So cool to have him on the show. Uh, really good insight. Maybe he'll, uh, um, he'll return the favor and I'll do a little Manning cast maybe this year, talk a hey. little football. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.